In 2010, an opportunity arose for a mutually beneficial collaboration between a Kent-based charity involved in social enterprise, the Blackthorn Trust, and Canterbury Christchurch University. The university was keen to establish a new stream of work in the field of appreciative inquiry. Building on the growing expertise in applying appreciative inquiry within process consultancy, along with a strong track record in evaluation, a collaborative project was set up between two university faculties to develop a model and toolkit for evaluating organisational efficacy using appreciative inquiry. In essence, appreciative inquiry is all about seeking out what gives an organisation its energy when it is most capable and effective. It is a strength-based approach to organisation development and works on the basis that in every situation something works, providing the base to build from. Crucially, unlike traditional evaluation approaches, it involves all those with a stake in the organisation in building the future they want to be part of, so the change starts immediately and is taken forward by all involved, rather than requiring the adoption of a set of recommendations from an external expert. I was hoping to um, achieve, I suppose, a sense of solidarity amongst the community at Blackthorn as a whole. I suppose I wanted to create a really open working environment where people felt they could contribute and feel their own competency and their own experience and their own ideas. Uh, originally I became involved because my mum was a patient here mm -hmm. and then more recently my sister was a patient here and uh, they received a huge amount of help and a uh, huge amount of help in terms of recovering from quite serious illnesses both mm -hmm. of them and that's how I got interested in what happens here at Blackthorn. Mm -hmm. I was in the Seven Oaks Neurological Unit, re Rehabilitation Unit, and I had a good occupational therapist, but I couldn't walk or nothing, you know. And of course my OT said, I'm going to get you in Blackthorn, and it's done wonders. I can walk on my own now. And all the people, doctors, and the therapists, everything really. There's nothing more anyone that's disabled can wish for. Most of the communities like Blackthorn have a bakery and um, there's, always, there's always pressure, bread is always needed, people always need something first thing in the morning right through till we're, we close in the afternoon and it's, it's very central and it's, um, it's a calming element as well because we don't rush the bread making, it's quite a slow process. Well we make artisan um, breads by, by hand, we make the initial mix uh, with a machine but then every individual loaf is mixed by hand and we try to make something different and real, there's no additives, it's all organic flour, there's no flour improvers, it's bread how bread should be made. I love it actually, I love it because everyone's different, everyone makes different bread, the, the, the speed that they need it or the temperature of their hands or um, how, how strong they are with the, with the dough, it makes such a difference, so it's interesting, the person comes out from the loaf. And I really want to change my life and do something that involved what I love, which is food, and this was the perfect place to do something that is meaningful, helping people to re-engage with life, people who have had very difficult paths, and to help them with bread, gardening, food, I mean, what more could you ask for? It's just a, it's a wonderful place to work, it really is. So, um, I chose to come to Blackthorn here because uh, um, I really wanted to give something back, you know. Uh, my key worker told me about Blackthorn, and uh, it was something that really struck me. I just thought this was a call in here. So I came here, I had an interview, I was um, given an opportunity to come and work here. I've been so impressed with my co-workers because they've each taken on a separate project and all of them working towards. But also social enterprise and knowing that it's not just what we do here, it's actually a wider community but not forgetting the major reason why they're here, and that is to nurture the co-workers and help them with their confidence and self-esteem.
haven't got that interaction with nature. And so that really is a, is a powerful healing tool to actually work with the rhythm of the seasons, which again in our culture lots of people have lost. And also to be growing, with, I'm growing the, the vegetables and the herbs. So we're growing the vegetables and then we'll harvest them, take them to the kitchen and then we'll be eating them at lunchtime. So mm. that is fantastic, to have that real connection with your own sort of food production. It works extremely well because crafts are something that people can make and, and sell and for our co-workers it's always such a buzz for them to be able to sell something that they have made um, and people often make things and then are really surprised how beautiful something looks at the end or that they have made it. It's a fantastic place. Um, when I started here I was very, very low, very down. Um, not connected with anyone at all really and you know it's really brought me back to not quite full health yet but we're mm -hmm. a long way on the road there so it's, it's been brilliant. questions were asked because we ourselves don't always when you're right in it so, so um, I thought the process was really good that you asked people individually mm -hmm. um, and then also in groups because a lot of our co-workers don't like sort of speaking in very large groups okay. but also the co-workers have asked questions afterwards as well when we were sitting around the table here making things together mm -hmm. so there was a bit of feedback from them and more questions so that was really nice too, because otherwise they probably wouldn't have thought of asking those questions yes. either. giving a structure to people, giving some feedback to the place that they're involved in every day. Um, so I think the fact that other people were interviewing them, it also got a group of eight of us uh, who were doing the interviewing involved in talking to people we have not talked to before in that much depth. time you're in the box. It's good to get out and look in and I think that was very very good. Yeah. Yeah, undoubtedly lots of questions, what was going on, mm -hmm. people want to move forward, you know, with the whole organisation and progress. I thought the summit was quite moving actually. I mean there were some um, people who spoke at it really from the heart, people who've had very you know, severe problems. Well, it took a bit of courage but uh... Yeah, I finally went out and stood at the front and gave a, uh, my, my testimony in my life and uh, how I reached Blackthorn here today. And um, it was about, really, the summit was about, you know, progress and moving on, Blackthorn mm -hmm. moving on. The summit was very enjoyable. It was really um, quite exciting because lots and lots of different aspects were coming all together. I mean, when you're busy working, you sort of kind of just in there and you don't often take a step back and ask these questions so that was that was really good. I was particularly interested in 
what's known as Blackthorn 2, which is the, the move on from, if you like, where we are, where we are now, where it's more therapeutic, um, to becoming more of a working environment so that we can move people on to that next stage um, and get them more involved in, in the community and, and more set up really for going back, doing a part-time or full-time job. I think the strategic plan allows people to um, know what the, the broad framework is now for the future of Blackthorn and then to work around that you know, in a way by developing other ideas that can fit with that. So I've noticed there's, there's more a sense of community mm -hmm. and cohesiveness. So there's more working together with a common aim. I think the main highlight was when it drew everyone else in and really gave them a little bit of ownership too. When we had um, the meeting where everyone was putting their own ideas in, that to me was very, very powerful. Uh, one of the great outcomes of the day as far as I was concerned in my role as a trustee was um, setting the foundation, if you like, for, for our plans for the next three years. And I'm really pleased that we've now got in writing, on the ground, uh, a quite clear plan for where we want to go and uh, lots of enthusiasm for implementing it. What strikes me about this project, Sonia, is just what a privilege it's been to work in and alongside this amazing organisation that does such great work out there in the community and really makes a difference to people's lives. And I'm really struck by the appreciative inquiry approach and how enabling and empowering it is. Just seeing how people did embrace the process, start getting involved, asking different questions, uh, working in different ways with their colleagues, with, with volunteers, with service users. It was great to see that um, and really reinforces for me how helpful this process is, not just in this organisation, but in others too, particularly in the third sector, and particularly when you're facing challenging economic times. A real good opportunity to get the wisdom from the people in the organisation and really work out what you want to do next. People from different parts of the organisation um, either volunteers, service users or management embraced this project and felt more empowered to do something about their organization. They felt empowered to interview other members of staff and to put their ideas forward. So this is a fine example of a bottom-up collaborative project that contributes to the workforce development of the organization and leaves a legacy that lasts beyond the end of the project put some solid ground under our feet in terms of our thinking. We've got a, a, a sort of joint team sheet, if you like, across the organisation. We know where we're going, what we need to do. And, and that's the gift, really, that we were given by Christchurch um, and the legacy, I guess, of, of, of what was offered to us.